Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about disjoint sets, which is a very useful data structure for graph algorithms. Suppose we have a universe of items which we want to manage with disjoint sets. Disjoint sets is a group of sets where no item can be in more than one set. So each item can belong to only one set. As an example, this is an example of disjoint sets. We have four disjoint sets, S1, S2, S3, S4. S3 contains two items. S1, S2, S4 each contains only one item. Disjoint sets support at least two operations, find and union, which is also known as find union algorithm. Find will take one item as a parameter and return the disjoint set this item belongs to. So find D will return S3 because D is an element in S3. Union takes two disjoint sets as parameter and as a result those two disjoint sets will be merged into one set. So the result of union S1, S2 is this. Both S1 and S2 are merged into the same disjoint set S1. And both A and C are items inside S1. So this is an example of disjoint sets and what kind of operations that it can do. The next question to consider is how do we implement a disjoint set? There are different ways to implement disjoint sets. The most commonly used is tree-based disjoint sets or disjoint set forest. So this is an example of tree-based disjoint sets. For tree-based disjoint sets, each set is a tree. So S3 is a tree and each item has a pointer that points to another item. A set is identified by the root of the tree. The root of S3 is B, and the root of S1 is A, the root of S2 is C. Root has a unique attribute that its pointer is pointing to itself, so all the roots can be identified by their self-pointing pointers. When we call find D, we'll find the parent of D, which is B, and B is representing S3. So we claim that we found the disjoint set of D is S3. And when we call union S2, S1, we are merging S2 and S1 into one disjoint set. So the result is this. S2 is gone, and C is no longer a root. Both A and C belong to S1, and S1 is represented by its root, A. And then if we call union S1, S3, we are merging S1 and S3 into one disjoint set, and the result is this. The elements of A, B, C, D all belong to the disjoint set S3, and S3 is represented by its root, B. Now let's consider what's the complexity of the tree-based disjoint set. Union is very fast, because for union we only need to change one pointer. For example, the point of A originally was pointing to itself, and now it points to B, and we have finished the merging. So union only takes constant time. Find takes the time of the depth. If we try to find the disjoint set of C, first we find its parent A, and then find its parent B. So the time of find is proportional to the depth of the tree. Tree-based disjoint set can be easily implemented with pointers. 
So if we have an item whose data structure is like this, it has some kind of data and uh, has an, a pointer that points to its parent, which is another item. So with this, we can easily implement the tree-based disjoint set. But sometimes this approach of using pointers is not so convenient. For example, what if the item data structure doesn't have a pointer, and uh, this item is defined in a third-party library, therefore you cannot change it. Then things become difficult. You have to create a wrapper class of this item and adding a pointer inside the wrapper. There is another way of implementing a tree that doesn't use pointers at all, which is using hash table. Using hash table has the advantage that it is not intrusive. We don't have to change the data structure of the item to add pointers if it doesn't have one. We can use the item as is. So for today's coding demo, I'm going to use hash table to implement tree-based disjoint sets. This is a C++ implementation example of disjoint set. So in this case, the type of our items is char. And uh, the universe of items contain five chars, A, B, C, D, E. The key data in the disjoint set is this parent, which is a hash table. And uh, this hash table defines the parental relationship between the chars. And in the constructor, we take each item of the universe and set its parent to be itself which means we'll have five disjoint sets and each set contains only one item. And then we set the parent of D to be B. And as a result of that, B and D are in the same set and B is the root. So essentially, we have created this disjoint sets. B and D are in the same set and A, C, E are in their own set. The find function take an item as a parameter and return the disjoint set where this item belongs to. If the parent of this item is this item itself, which means this item is the root, and the root is a representative of the disjoint set. So we can claim that we have found the disjoint set and return the root. Otherwise, we continue to find the parent of the item. The union function takes two disjoint sets as parameter, and these two disjoint sets are represented with their roots. And what this function does is it sets the second root to be the parent of the first root. As a result, the first root is no longer a root, and the second root is the root of both disjoint sets. So they are merged. In the main function, I have created a disjoint set, ds. And if I do ds.find c, this should return c because C belongs to a single item disjoint set, as shown in this picture. And then I do ds.union C A. So I'm merging the disjoint set of C and the disjoint set of A. So as a result, A and C are in the same set. So in the picture, basically we have done this. A is the new root of this new set. And now, if we do ds.find C again, this will return A. And if we do ds.union a, 
A is the new root, so it, it represents that set. And we union A with B, and B is the root of the set that contains B and D. So as a result is A, C, B, D are in the same set. So in the picture, what we have done is this. So this is how a disjoint set data structure can be used. Now let's analyze if there's any way we can improve the performance of disjoint sets. The union function only takes constant time, so there's no room to improve the union function. But the find function is slower. It is in the order of the depth of the tree. So the deeper the tree grows, the slower the find will become. So if we can find a way to let the tree more grow toward the side than growing downward, then we can flatten the tree and we can improve the performance of the find function. Let's look at our code. So where do the trees grow? The trees grow in the union function. And here I just randomly choose the second root to be the new root. So if I'm unlucky, my tree will grow deeper and deeper and the find function will become slower and slower. Now let me implement some strategy in choosing the new root. If I always choose the root of the deeper tree to be the new root, then the tree will not grow deeper. Let me repeat. If I always choose the root of the deeper tree to be the new root, then the tree will not grow deeper. And that is a very good news for us. But in order to do that, we need something to record the depth of the trees. So let's do it. We'll create another unordered map, which is from char to int. Let's call it rank. And this is to record the depth of trees. Initially, we made every disjoint set to contain only one item. So that means the rank of each tree is 0. And after we merged D and B, the rank of B becomes 1. And the union function needs to be more complicated. So this is my new union function. Remember, we'll choose the root of a deeper tree to be the new root. So if the rank of set 1 is bigger than set 2, we'll choose set 1 to be the new root. If the rank of set 2 is bigger than set 1, then we'll choose set 2 to be the new root. Else, if both trees are of the same depth, then we just randomly choose set 2 as the new root, but the rank of set 2 will increase by 1. So only when both trees are of the same depth, the tree will grow deeper by 1. Now we'll have much more flattened trees than previous implementation. Therefore, we'll have better performance with the find function. That's all for today. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. Bye-bye.